Earlier this week, I took delivery of this. It's the Surface Pro 6, the much anticipated follow-up to last year's popular Surface Pro line. And I've been pretty impressed with it ever since. I've run the benchmarks, I've done all the testing, and here's my final review. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Surface Pro 6. Coming up. Today's video is brought to you by AlexandraStylus.com, makers of some great replacement tips for your Surface Pen. I'll put all the links below for more information. Want to see more videos like this? Well, why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification icon. This way you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. And don't forget to check me out on my social media, especially Twitter, because that's where I post all the latest updates. If you haven't done so, check out my unboxing and first impressions video. I'll go over a lot of things of this device that I won't cover here in this review. So check it out if you haven't done so. Now here's a quick rundown of the specs. You get a 12.3 inch pixel sense display. You can get it with either the Core i5 or the Core i7 Intel 8th generation quad core CPUs. It comes with either eight or 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Storage options start at 128 gigabytes all the way up to one terabyte NVMe SSD storage. Now the Core i5 model, the model I chose is a fanless design. So there is no fan noise. And when it comes to performance, I immediately noticed a big increase over last year's model. In fact, it was about a 40 to 50% increase in general. So that's pretty impressive as far as the eighth generation Intel CPUs are concerned. But in an interesting note, the GPU is not quite as powerful as last year's model. And that's why on the 3D Mark tests, I wasn't getting quite as good scores. But the overall performance is actually better due to that quad core CPU, eighth generation, which gives you about that 40 to 50% boost in performance. That's definitely an advantage, I think, overall. But the GPU is not quite as powerful. Very interesting. Now, Microsoft did away with the fan in the Core i5 model, so I was kind of curious to see how the thermals would hold up without any kind of active cooling. And I'm happy to report that when I did put it under the stress test for about an hour and 15 minutes, it did very well, as you can see from these thermal profiles I'm showing here right now. And not only did I see an improved performance from that eighth generation quad core CPU, but we also saw better battery life. In fact, it has a 45 watt hour battery. And here's how it did on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi until the battery was drained. It did nine hours and 42 minutes, which is better than last year's model, which got only seven hours and 35 minutes. And it did an excellent 13 hours and two minutes on my 1080p video playback test at 200 nits. That is certainly excellent beating out last year's model, which got 10 hours and 43 minutes. Excellent in that department. But if you do find yourself needing to plug in, it comes with a 44 watt power adapter in the box and it takes about two hours and 45 minutes to give you a full charge from zero. And once again, it has an extra USB port to charge your other devices. That's a nice touch to keep that. And once again, they're going with the Surface connector to charge this device. There is no USB-C and there is no Thunderbolt 3. That's a disappointment. I'm not sure Microsoft's thinking on this. Maybe they want to save it for next year's model. Who knows? But again, that is a disappointment. No USB-C on this device. Well, something new with this device is the new matte black finish. I'm a huge fan of it. I think it looks gorgeous, elegant, and very sleek looking at the same time. And so far, fingerprints haven't really been an issue. And I love the kickstand on this, giving you the excellent angle that you want. You also get that very sturdy hinge as well. Now, when it comes to the type cover, it has a very strong magnet connecting very securely to the Surface Pro 6. And it has a multi-stage backlighting, letting you work in a dark environment or a dimly lit room. That's great if you need to get productivity work done. Now, I think this type cover is actually pretty good. I've reviewed this in the past as well as the more expensive Signature Alcantara type cover, and it's actually pretty good. Now, as far as the touchpad, it uses the precision drivers. I thought it was very responsive and two finger scrolling seemed to work really well. It was good. Now, one of the best ways to use the Surface Pro is with the Surface Pen. Now, the Surface Pen, as I stated, is an additional $99 on top of what you're already paying for the Surface Pro 6. Kind of wish they did include that at the price point, but they don't. Now, having said that, it is really a good experience in terms of taking notes or sketching out artwork. This is really one of the best options out there. I think, in my opinion, it's better than the Apple Pencil. I really do like the Surface Pen. Now, it does use the Entrig Pen technology and uses one quadruple A battery, which seems to last quite a long time. 
Now, one of the best use case scenarios for the Surface Pen and the Surface Pro 6 is the fact that you can edit PDFs on it. And as a content creator here on YouTube, I'm constantly getting PDFs such as contracts that I either need to sign, edit, annotate, make some notes, and really manipulate the PDF. And that's where I found this. This is from Wondershare. It's called the PDF Element, and it's an affordable way for you to edit PDFs. And I found it to be a perfect companion to the Surface Pro 6 when using the Surface Pen. It's really a great tandem together. Adding your handwritten signature to a contract is very easy as well as highlighting important facts, important sections of your PDF. It's available for both Windows and Mac and comes in at a very affordable $59.95 that is certainly a lot cheaper than Adobe Professional. But for a limited time, there's a 40% discount off the standard version, bringing it down to $35.97 and bringing the Pro version down to $69.96. That's fantastic. I'll put the link below to get you that savings. Now, another area of improvement is its display. It sports a 12.3 inch pixel sense display with a resolution of 2736 by 1824. That's 267 pixels per inch and it has a 3x2 aspect ratio. Now, I'm a big fan of the 3x2 aspect ratio because that aspect ratio allows you to get productivity worked on as well as consuming media such as Netflix and YouTube on this device is excellent. Although there is no HDR option and there is no 4K option, which is a little bit disappointing pointing but it is a brighter display than last year's model coming in at 479 nits making it good for both indoor and outdoor use trouncing its competition and certainly above the category average of 335 nits and it also has the hallmarks of an excellent display, really deep blacks, very vibrant colors that cover the color gamut really well. In fact, it has 140 sRGB, which is the same as last year, which is excellent. It's certainly above the category average of 128 sRGB. And I have to say, this is one of the best displays on a two-in-one that you can buy right now. I think Microsoft hit a home run in terms of improving this over last year's model. It's not only brighter, it's certainly better. Hats off to Microsoft on doing such a good job on this display. Now, one thing I noticed when using the Surface Pen over a long period of time over the years is that the pen tips will wear out. So you will need your replacement strategy. Unfortunately, the Microsoft offering is not only expensive, they only give you one HP tip. That's the most popular tip. That's the one people use the most. Now, my recommendation is to go with the Alexandra Surface Pen replacement tips. Not only are they cheaper than Microsoft's offering, they also are more durable. In fact, I've been using them for the past few months. They have held up a lot better than the Microsoft offering over that same period of time. In fact, this is what the Microsoft tip looked like after only three months. Not only do they offer the HB tips, they now offer the B tips as well. They all come in at $17.99, which is a lot cheaper than what you have to pay to get Microsoft replacement tips. I'll put all the links below for more information and where you can buy them. I tested the sound in my unboxing video and I like these front facing speakers, but for those who didn't get a chance to see my video, here it is again. So this is the front facing camera on the Surface Pro 6. It's a 1080p, 30 frames per second, 16 by nine camera. It's actually pretty good. I wanna know what you think about it. Let me know in the comment section below. It's definitely usable for Skype, for video conferencing, and I think it certainly can get the job done. I wanna know what you think about it. Let me know in that comment section below. Now, as far as taking photos, the front facing camera is not too bad. The rear facing camera, well, it's not very good. Things look a little bit washed out. They didn't do great in low light situations. I'm not surprised with this tablet or two in one. So again, I wouldn't be taking too many photos or videos. You know my stance by now. 
And when it comes to video, the 1080p 30 frames per second is, well, pretty bad. <laughs> you can see for yourself. So to bring it all home, can I recommend the brand new Surface Pro 6? And the answer is absolutely improvements pretty much all across the board. Improved display, improved battery life, improved performance, and a beautiful matte black finish makes this a definite winner. Of course, negatives being the lack of USB-C, the lack of Thunderbolt 3, and the fact that it's a step down in terms of the GPU. And of course, this is an unchanged design from previous models, but there are no real deal breakers here. I'm gonna give it a score of 93%, earning the AMD Tech Editor's Choice for the two-in-one here for late 2018, making it worth your money. So what do you think about the Surface Pro 6? I like it. I like the fact that it now has the quad-core CPU. It's the Intel eighth generation, either the Core i5 or the Core i7. Now this is the Core i5, it's fanless, it's silent, it runs relatively cool, and performance is a significant upgrade over last year's model. We're looking at about 40 to 50% over last year's model, and that's a pretty significant increase. I love the Surface Pen with its 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity. Great for taking notes, great for sketching out artwork, taking it to a meeting, taking it to a classroom, it certainly can get the job done. And I love the matte black finish. It doesn't show fingerprints as much as I thought it would. I guess the coating they're using on it is a very good one because it doesn't really show too many fingerprints, and that's a good thing. Uh, the type cover, I got the basic black this time. It's $129 on top of what you're paying for the Surface Pro 6. It's actually pretty good. We've seen it before. I've seen the Alcantara as well. That's an additional $160 that you'd have to pay. Now, this is $99. So one of the negatives, I think, with this device is that you're going to have to add in those accessories. And to me, there must have accessories, at least the keyboard, that's for sure. And maybe the pen, depending on if you're a student or you're an artist, you definitely would want to get that. But I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. I actually am pleasantly surprised with this device. I think it's a, enough of an upgrade over last year's model to definitely recommend it. If you have last year's model, I think the Core i5 with this fanless design and the fact that you're getting 40 to 50% better processing power is enough to me to say, go ahead and buy it. But again, the GPU won't be as good but again, the processor will outweigh that, and I think I can recommend it with that. I'm really liking this. I think this is the probably the best two-in-one on the market so far. Here, we're already in late 2018, and I have no hesitation recommending it. Again, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.